Here's a T-80 tank with a representative unit in the sled. This device was introduced just a couple months ago and is now being experimented on new machinery. One can talk about how dramatically modern warfare has changed with the advent of FPV drones and in general various drones to no end. Armored vehicles on the battlefield in the 21st century already had enough enemies, from ATGMs to attack helicopters. And now there are penny racing quads that can be safely run by yesterday's schoolboy, iron lover or experienced computer player. It is a curious fact that the same Houthis are on the case. The drone technology of commercial vehicles for military purposes was one of the first. FPV drones with ordnance. They started flying their way before most of us even knew they existed. But that's just a lyrical digression. Still, the real era of FPV drones can be called only the last six months. Such drones are becoming more and more complex, but from this they lose the main thing in cheapness and mass production. A well-packaged FPV drone with a homing system and thermal imager already costs over $500 thousand rubles. And it's pretty clear that the army that manages to find a way to stop and destroy these small, annoying, but extremely dangerous products will now have the advantage. What makes them especially dangerous is that, like the PPSH submachine gun in its time, such drones can be assembled in semi-artisanal workshops and mini-production facilities, which do not have enough missiles. We've seen quite a few of all sorts of tools lately, from droning shotguns to customized dome rigs wrap for armored vehicles but all of them only reduced the mathematical chances of losing a tank or armored personnel carrier so as to at least half eliminate this very unpleasant threat. That wasn't even close. But recently I came across a video of a little-known Russian company 3MX, which is dedicated exclusively to fighting this new threat. Here is a photo of their device the device they showed with the name, Sonya. Although it seemed rather oversized, but according to the typical, According to the current FPV checks, it worked perfectly. There is no hoax here, but the normal operation of jammers, known since time immemorial. There is no sense to bore the listener with the enumeration of frequencies on which the device works, because people who know in themselves will understand everything. And those who are simply interested can watch this material on the manufacturer's website and instantly see for themselves how this plays out under the conditions of a real experiment. Now. Thanks to the mini-theorization of electronic devices, it is possible to make quite powerful jamming stations of relatively small size. And what was my surprise, and in a good way, when just the other day we saw Sonya on one of the Russian tanks. So far it looks unwieldy and is sure to be the number one target for tank hunters. But at least it sure works. And further, it is a matter of technique to integrate such jamming transmitters according to all the rules of military affairs. Here's AT-80 with a barbecue and the representative system, they and what can I say hard times give birth to new forces and ideas and in this sense now everything is visible as on the palm of the hand. People's initiatives multiplied by a scientific, technical and engineering school with deep roots undoubtedly give a very good result and the main thing is that the path from a good project to a product in iron and in series has been significantly reduced. Maybe sleds and will begin to leave the epidemic of drone fear well or at least there will be an opportunity to get some kind of temporary backlash to finally solve the problem with massive production of the entire possible line of drones, as promised. Well I'd also like to tell you about how the Heimer's shells and Jadam's bombs broke their teeth on our rap machines. Right now, a lot of people are taking stock of the year. And economists, and politicians, and the military. If we talk about Russian innovations that have had a serious impact on the course of military operations, three immediately come to mind. These include bombs with a universal planning and correction module, the Kamikaze Lancet drone, and tens of thousands of unnamed FPV drones assembled, what they call, on their knees. This is our personal ranking, and I think many will agree with me. To read foreign publications, which rarely write well about us, but are now forced to recognize some of the successes of the Russian army, the main superweapon of our armed forces is often referred to as the power that cannot be seen by the human eye. However, modern tools of war with clever electronic stuffing are increasingly falling victim to its highly destructive effects. USGMLRS family of guided projectile munitions designed for HIMARS type fire units. And high precision J dam planning bombs were considered in the United States to be fairly low cost and technologically advanced weapons capable of breaking the will of any enemy in conventional warfare. It's fair to say that at first, at least, the HIMARS guided projectiles were a very unpleasant surprise indeed. And to some extent, they still are. But if you compare, for example, with the summer and fall of last year, it's heaven and earth. A good remedy for the HIMARS were our PANZE anti-aircraft missile cannon systems, of various modifications. 
In the fall of 22, they were tweaked a bit and made a special algorithm for fire control systems for JMLRS. Of course, he can't give a 100% guarantee, but cases when the shell shot down as many as a couple packets of Heimer's missiles at a time are not that uncommon. But it is not our SAMs that are being written about most in Western publications now. It's been around since the Vietnam War. The most disgusting thing, which is written about in the final materials of various publications, from specialized to purely civilian, is the Russian means of rep. The nasty, of course, is for them, not us. We love and honor our representative tools in every way possible, and it is finally now that we truly appreciate their importance in today's environment. In the meantime, here are a couple of quotes, just for fun. So, quote, first, experts notice that its GPS-guided 155mm S-caliber artillery shells suddenly began to deflect off-target. Then missiles fired by HIMARS, which the US once boasted had scalpel-like accuracy, began to miss their targets. In some areas, they almost always missed. The same happened with the GDAM guided bombs supplied by the United States. A thorough investigation eventually revealed that they were all victims of the new threat of Russian interference. Moscow has stealthily learned how to disable some of its most valuable missiles. According to Western experts, Russia, as if in Japanese judo wrestling, is turning the technological advantage of Western weapons into its vulnerability. Most U.S. munitions among what are called smart munitions are critically dependent on satellite navigation. And having lost contact with satellites, instantly become stuffed with explosives bullets, missing by many dozens of meters. To quote further, smart missiles from high-precision MLRS rockets like HIMARS are more susceptible to reps from birth than conventional barrel and rocket artillery munitions. Without GPS, they won't accomplish their goals. Russia's Field 21 rep machine is used to suppress satellite signals. It protects Russian military assets well from approaching drones or missiles. At the same time, it is only one component of Moscow's growing and developing electronic arsenal. Jamming as well as GPS spoofing is a technique that effectively tricks an enemy drone or missile into thinking it is somewhere else, which also disrupts radar radio and even cellular communications. And by the way, here is the flag and emblem of the electronic warfare troops of the Russian Federation. Another major quote from a major military publication that I just loved quoting the unparalleled resilience of the Russian soldier by the vast expanse. And where without it General Frost now the Russians have another invisible trump card in front of them, modern technology. Now, if you want to defeat Russia, you have one more task, break its electronic shield. And mind you, it just won't. End of article. The Field 21, as well as the KRASUKHA-4, are by far the most mentioned rap machines in Western military periodicals. And almost certainly one of the best in the world, if not the best, in its class.